going to place. Shabbat shalom, everyone. My name is Dari Yezro Abel, and I'd like to serve forever. Please, please is starting very soon. It's now time to start finding your seats for Sabbath services. Shabbat shalom, everyone. My name is Makoma, and I like to serve you. And I want to. My name is Daughter of Rachel Abel, Makoma Hawk, Hawkins, and I like to serve you forever as a priest. Is studying very soon. It's a privilege and honor to turn it over to the sons and daughters to to turn it over to the sons and daughters of Rachel Abel now into an official. It's a privilege and honor to turn it over to daughter of visual Abel, Abigail. Shabbat shalom, everyone. You may be seated. My name is daughter of visual Abel, Abigail Hawkins, and my title today is Blessed Are Your Eyes. Our high priest, Yahshua, gave us many examples that we can read in the book of Yahweh and learn from. One example is found in Yachanan 20, 24 through 29. Please turn there with me. It's found on page 838. Verse 24, but Thomas was one of the twelve. He was not with them when Yeshua came. So the other disciples said to him, we have seen Yeshua. But he said to them, unless I will see his hands and the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Unless I see nuclear war start on September 12, 2006, I'm not going to believe it. Unless I see why it is important to follow what the Kohans and Kohanas tell me, I'm what the Kohanas and Kohans tell me to do, I'm not going to do it. That was Thomas' attitude when the apostles told him they had seen Yeshua. They had seen Yeshua. But look at verse 27. Then he said to Thomas, Reach out your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. And do not be faithless, but believing. Then Thomas answered and said to him, My teacher, my king. Yeshua said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Notice, Thomas did believe after he saw Yahshua, but he missed out on his blessing. You see, Yahshua made a distinction here. They all believed it was him coming to them, but some had to see him with their own eyes, like Thomas. Others believed because of the prophecies that Yahshua had taught them. Do we believe the prophecies we have been taught by the last day's witness, Yeshua Hawkins? We should, because if you notice, Yahshua said, those who believe without seeing will be blessed. In fact, our great teacher told us just last Sabbath, we will have the blessing of receiving the highest authority to guard and keep all that Yahweh has created. If, and here Pastor made that distinction also, if we believe without seeing. Thank you for your time, and now I'd like to turn it over to the next speaker. Shabbat Shalom, great saints of Yahweh. A great Pentecost to you. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome all of you who were able to make it for the great feast of Pentecost and those who are also joining in over the media. Praise Yahweh. Um, what is in your cup? 
is what I want to talk to us today for a few minutes. What is in your cup? And why I want to do it is because the great last days of witness, the great one sent, when he said, Yeshua took the cup, this cup has not left my mind. And I touched on it a little bit, and I wanted to remind you that I brought some cups, if you remember. You remember? And I brought the cup. So today I brought one that we can think of Yeshua and what was in Yeshua's cup. We know Yeshua taught and taught. And Yeshua was a man who, when he understood the prophecies, he, he knew what day he was going to die. He knew who was going to kill him. In the cup that he shared with his disciples, he said, drink all of it. What portion of that cup do we have here in these last days? Because Yahweh said, in the last days, I'm going to establish my house. So, Yeshua took the cup, okay? And he shared it. His disciples, he said once to his brothers, he said, you all, go ahead and go before me. I will come after you, knowing that they were planning to kill him. What was in Yeshua's cup? Teaching day and night, the same ones who were going to kill him, he's teaching them day and night. He said once to his brother, and he said, "Um, okay, everybody have left me, the disciples, will you leave me too? Also in Yeshua's cup, though, I want you to remember, was the power to say to the microorganisms, um, when I step out from the boat, create like a strong foundation so I can step and I won't sink. I need to walk on the water. You remember that? In the Akanan 6. Yeshua's cup. Yeshua also had that glory that was given to him where the demons could see Yeshua from afar. You remember that? In Matthias um, chapter 8, they could see him from afar. And they said, okay, which one, of you, which one of you want to ask him what he came to do? You do. Okay. Yeshua, did you come to send us to the curse before our time? Um, okay. If not, then go ahead and throw us in the swine over there. You remember that? And Yahshua said, go. What is in your cup? The things that Yahshua shared, not only the pain, the suffering, the nights that you will be, sleepless nights, but also the power, the ability to do things. Look at in in Yachanan 11, when Yahshua said, "Um, where's Lazarus? Lazarus has died. How many days? Four days. Miriam, Yahshua asked Miriam, where have you laid him? Over there. How many days? Four days. Yahshua, there's a stench. Yahshua said, where have you laid him? Over there. What did Yahshua do? He raised him from the dead. Shed in a cup to the disciples. Drink all of it. What's in your cup, sisters? What is in your cup? that has to define you and redefine you to turn you into what Yahweh really wants you to be or maybe what you are now, that Yahweh wants for his great plan. Look at Kepha. You remember Kepha? Kepha said when it was time to sacrifice him, he said, no, don't, don't, don't sacrifice me my head up, my foot down. Sacrifice me upside down and let the pain go through my body this way. What was in his cup that defined him, that redefined him to that point? What is in your cup? What was in Stephen's cup that defined him and redefined him that at the point of death they stoned him and some strong people were there sending stones? And when those stones hit him here and there, you know what Stephen said? Father... When the pen ripped through his body, what did he say? He said, Father, don't even put that on their account. What is in your cup? What is in my cup? 
And Yeshua, when the reality of the situation came, he took three of his disciples to pray with him. He said, you all wait here for me a little bit. Let me go up. And what he said to great father Yahweh, he said, father, is it possible to take my cup? Do you remember that? Yet not my will, but your will. So sisters, what is in your cup? And how are you drinking it? Then he went again and he said, come back, you all, wait for me a little bit. I'm going to pray some more. And he said the same words. He said, Father, if the cup I'm drinking, I must drink it. The man grieved knowing he was going to die the next night, the next day. Grieved. What was in his cup? Father, let take the cup from me, but if I must drink it, let me drink it. So in closing, all I want to ask us today is, what is in your cup? What is in your cup to define you to who Yahweh wants you to be? And with that, I turn over to the next speaker. Praise Yahweh. Hello, please be seated. I'm going to get right into this. So you know how pastor really his whole face just lights up when he starts to talk about prophecy? And I think we all really love to know what to expect, you know, what things to look out for. And that was given to us, the house of Yahweh in these last days, to teach the laws and the prophecies. The prophecy tells us what to expect. It's a sure thing. We may not always know every little intricate detail and how it's going to come to pass or when it's going to, going to come to pass, but we know if it's prophecy, it is going to come to pass. True? Praise Yahweh. And when we're waiting for these things to come to pass, we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're still going through the day-to-day -day grind while we're waiting. And, you know, sometimes we can, we can get tired. We're all tired of this beastly system and the way that the, the system runs things now, right? But we can't get so tired that we forget why we're here. Because if, we're, if we lose our zeal to be in Yahweh's house, we're losing our place to be in Yahweh's kingdom. So we can never forget these prophecies. The fact, the fact that this is Yahweh's house and this is the only place that is going to give us eternal life. That's, it's just a fact. We always have to go back to the basics to reel us back in, right? So that we always remember the prophetic facts and why we're here and why we came to, to this place to begin with. And if you look around the room, just everyone look around the room to your right, to your left, you see, if you've been here for any amount of time, there are some faces that you haven't, that you don't see anymore. Not the ones that have fallen asleep, but the ones that and they got too tired, you know, and they said, I'm, I'm tired of running this race anymore. I'm done. I'm over it. And they leave. They give up their place. They give up their position. You know, but this too is also prophecy. We read in the book of Yahweh that a list of names of the people that are going to leave the house of Yahweh. No, we make our own choice. But we do know that three out of four is going to leave Yahweh's house. It's prophecy. In the Mark of the Beast, part two, chapter wrote, Pa Pastor chapter, chapter 18, Pastor wrote, however, just because one is called out to be given this wonderful opportunity does not mean that person will accept his calling. In Matithia chapter 13, Yahshua tells the parable of the sower to show us that three out of four will fall away from this wonderful calling. And we have to be more determined than ever to not be one of those three out of four because the wait can seem so long sometimes, you know, but the choice is completely ours. We can never let our guard down. Somebody said one time, you know, well, I should be okay. I've been here for such and such amount of time. But, you know, it's not how long we've been here. It's how long are we going to stay? And that's what Yahweh wants to see. We are a small group and we're doing a very big work. In the second book of Israel, chapter 7, pastor says that it may minister. Notice, we labor so the house of Yahweh may minister. Blessings to the hearers. You see what we're working for? It's not for yourself. It's so the house of Yahweh can send out and do the work. We have done a great deal in that field. People are amazed at what we have done with such a small group. 
They come here and they see the books, the booklets, and the magazines. They go out free from the house of Yahweh, and they think we're this huge, rich organization. Then they see this tiny group of people that we are, and they're absolutely amazed at the work we've done, and they've expressed it to us over and over. So that's us sitting right here. You know, that's us. We are living in this prophetic work right now. Out of all the people in the entire world, we have been given this opportunity. And if you can remember um, Pastor Sermon, some, where he's talked about how he was doing the radio broadcast with his brother and the local broadcast, and he was saying that he, you know, he knew that there had to be more to it because he, he knew the prophecy and he knew that it was going to reach the entire world, but he was thinking, you know, this little local broadcast, I don't, you know, he, he knew that there had to be more. He didn't know how or when. But he knew that there was. And Yahweh knew because he foretold that that prophecy in advance, that knowledge would be increased. And it's still being increased. And then Pastor was able to start, you know, mailing out the information around the world using the newsletters and the prophetic word magazines. And then the internet came into play. And I looked up a few things. The best I can tell, the first time that the House of Yahweh broadcasted a sermon live on the internet was on October 9th, 2010. And in just a few months now, that will be seven complete years that the House of Yahweh is broadcasting the sermons live on the internet. And we did it on Ustream, I remember, because you know, we didn't have our own uh, streaming channel back then. It was all very new to us. And that Ustream channel is actually still there. You can still pull that up and see the very first House of Yahweh sermon that was given on that day. And uh, Ustream showed that there were 224 views on that, on that sermon. Of course, not a lot of people knew we were streaming because they would think it was a last minute thing and, you know, we, we didn't advertise it and whatnot, but 224 people. And, and I looked it up, one of the meanings in the, in the Strong's was to grind. And I was just thinking how long pastor has been grinding and laboring and doing the work, you know, to even to just get to that point. But so the radio broadcast from what I remember, um, and I'm sure some people will correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, was in 1962. And the first internet broadcast was in 2010. And so that's 48 years wait from the first radio broadcast where Pastor was saying, how, how are we going to reach the world? This is just a little local radio broadcast from the time he, you know, was on the internet live. And so he knew it was going to come to pass, but he didn't know how, he didn't know when exactly, but he waited and waited and the fruits from that labor came and he sees the blessings from that. And so um, I just want to encourage everyone, stay a part of this living prophecy because we're a small group, but we're doing this. We don't want to be one of those three, the three out of four. We want to be the one that stays. And I had an encouraging quote to give, but I'm out of time. So may Yahweh truly bless you. And um, the next speaker asked me to ask you to get your pens and papers ready because she has a lot to say in a short time. So Yahweh bless. Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. Now, when you look at this here num time, what does it say? Oh. 841. Okay, but if you looked on your calendar when the sundown was last night when uh, Pentecost started, you would have seen it written this way, 841 without the dots. And I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing. So... I said that there must be a reason for that. So I, I looked up the number 841. But before I do that, let's turn to Acts chapter 2. And that's on page 841. So 841, page 841. Isn't it interesting that that's the page that says, now when the day of Pentecost has fully come. So was it a coincidence, or did uh, Yeshua want us to really see it as the page instead of the time? But the, the definition in the Strong's for 841 means, and it's the same thing that the overseer got up when he said, remember the number 16, it means contentment and unity. Well, in Greek, 841 means contentedness, having all sufficiency so you may abound in every righteous work, to be strong. And it goes to the word 142, which means branch, to expiate sin, or to get rid of sin. The overseer is here to get rid of sin. So in the Hebrew, it's 
um, means right toward Yahweh, to be straight, right, joyous, blessed, and to lead. Now, isn't that amazing? That describes the overseer to a T, perfect. So anyway, I'm going over the, the book. Uh, I was going through a prophetic word. And then I thought, well, when was the first prophetic word published? And I got the information, and it was on 10, 1983, the 10th month. And the last one now that's on the press is in July of 2017. So I did a search to see how many days in between those two dates. And it's 33 years and nine months. Now let's consider, who was conceived in his mother's womb in 1933? The overseer. And nine months later, he was born. The prophetic baby was born. 49 years later, we got the first PW. 49 in the Greek means a cleansing, to make clean, pure, sanctify. Are we not sanctified by the pure word of Yahweh? Isn't that what he's been teaching us? It's the pure word that brings us to, to cleanse ourselves and to purify ourselves. So then I went to October 1983 in the Gematria, and that means to consider. It's, it's the expression of thought in connection with the word of Yahweh, the message of Yahweh, delivered with his authority, made effective by his power. Now that's all talking about the prophetic word. So yes, it's the message from Yahweh that the overseer has with the authority that's given through the mouths of the holy prophets. It says authority made effective by his power. And it goes to another number, 3004, which means to break the silence, the bringing together. In the July PW, as when you get it, you'll see that they say that the name of Yahweh is in the book of Yahweh 6,823 times. That word in the Strong's means an expansion in outlook. It means to peer into the distance. Only Yahweh can do that, and only Yahweh can set it in order, and only Yahweh can make sure that nothing interferes with his plan. It means to peer into the distance as a watchman, to behold, to watch over with a purpose. And, in, and it gives a reference to Psalm 66, 7, which means he rules forever by his power. We are only able to understand because the Oki showed us. We are only, it's only understandable because the Oki showed them. In Matthew 5.14 it says, We are the light of the world, a city set on a hill. That song on a single hill, the beautiful song. Well, one day I was looking at my phone, and you know I don't know too much about my phones, but someone told me if you made that line go across it, it would get brighter because it was real dark. So I did. And when I was done with it, my phone gave me a little note message. It said, the high brightness may cause the battery to drain faster. I thought, OK. Well, let me just make sure I understand this message. So what is a battery? So I went to the legal dictionary, and it says battery. It's an intentional, unpermitted act causing harmful or offensive contact using violence, force, to put in fear, to become less, oh, so I said, okay, well, we really need to keep ourselves brightened up. We need to keep light because we want that battery to drain faster. So I said, well, what does the word lighten up mean? I better just check that out too. Lighten up, it said to become less gloomy, less angry, and to be more cheerful. And I thought, well, that is like really, really nice. But then, you know, I was looking this up on the internet, and it also had a little thing to go to a clip from a movie that says, Lighten Up Francis. And I thought, well, what's that all about? So can I have that excerpt from that movie, please? Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> and I thought, how ironic. Even the world is telling Pope Francis to lighten up. And we know that the only way that anyone can lighten up 
is, be, is to be taught the laws of Yahweh. The overseer is the only one that was ordained in these last days, uh, sent and beheld by Yeshua, our high priest. Remember uh, Revelations 22, verse 16, I, Yeshua, have sent my Malik to testify to you these, t- thing, these things, to bring the light to the world. We need to lighten up. That means study those laws, get them firmly in our mind. The overseer has done his part. How many years has it been in these prophetic words? In fact, there's, we're on our 406th prophetic word. And that, that is like, how many of you all have stuck to one thing when you had a goal that long? I think we need to give our overseer a great clap for staying um, on, on task. So praise Yahweh. Without him, we would be nothing. So remember, it's understandable only through Israel Abel Hawkins. And with that, I'll turn it over to the next speaker. Shalom, everyone. You may be seated on this beautiful Pentecost day, this beautiful, hot Pentecost day. Um, I'd like to, first of all, let you all know, if you didn't know, that you all are criminals. You have broken many laws, and it's because you teach the laws of Yahweh. In this newsletter, okay, this is the August 2014 newsletter. There's a little small article that says the book burning. And it says right here that the book burnings, which included Bibles, were common after 1521. Sometimes the translators and publishers themselves were also burned. Possessions of the Bibles became criminal offense. Do any of you own the book of Yahweh? You're a criminal. And often resulted in execution of the accused. But this is the one that I want you to really focus on. There are cases on records of people executed by the order of the church, which we know as the Vatican, for the crime of teaching their children Yahweh's prayers and the Ten Commandments. So this was a crime. They were executed. Thankfully, in the year 2017, the world has changed to where Yahweh is opening the doors. But you often wonder what life was like back then to be accused of doing righteousness, being imprisoned, being tortured, being killed. The only reason why this was allowed is because Yahweh wants to prove to Satan that no matter how hard you try, you cannot succeed. He, we know that Satan, there's one thing she wants to do, and that was to just stop the work. And stop what work? The work today that Yeshua is completing with the house of Yahweh. Now, I want you to think about the example of Yeshua when he was 12 years old. Do you remember? Yeah. That was the work that Satan was trying to stop. He said, Mom, Dad, why are you so worried about me? I am among the priests. I am among those that I want to learn from at the feet of the priests. I am about my father's business. Do you remember a pastor talking about how he wants to create little Yeshua's? He wants little Yeshua's running in the house of Yahweh. And that is what I really want everyone to really get from what I'm saying today. Remember what pastor said today, that the heavens are open and and, and all the beings are watching us and they're looking at the testimonies that we're bringing forth. So I, as a witness, I'm going to bring forth little testimonies from little people that proves that we have little Yeshua's and the work would not stop. My first example, a little daughter in the house of Yahweh went to the mom and said, Mom, um, where does it say in the scripture about the gathering? And of course, you know, mothers are busy. They're busy and they're like, you know, trying to answer the child, but then they're honest. They're like, okay, I can't really think of the scripture right now. What is the scripture? And the little girl says, she sings the song. That's what she does. The song about Yeremia 23. 
Remember that, this past piece? And that's her answer. She sung it because she was so zealous over the song, but she understood it. Here's another example from a son in the house of Yahweh who's a little Yeshua, just very little, but younger than four years old. And whenever you hand him something, is it kosher? Um, yes, it is. And after he looks at it, is it salted? So diligent, so diligent to make sure before he puts something in his mouth, it has to be right for his body. Here's another daughter in the house of Yahweh. We were learning about Genesis, and she was supposed to catch up with her work. You know, she's supposed to catch up, write her notes down, but her ear is listening to the teacher, and the teacher wants her to just sit the side in the corner, you know, kind of catch up with her work, but she keeps on raising her hand. She keeps on raising her hand, and the teacher's like, okay, look, you, you got to focus on catching up. No, I have a question, though. I have a question. And she's like, okay. She's like, okay, well, what's your question? Well, if Yahweh told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of life, how did Yahweh do that? I mean, surely Yahweh didn't come down. How did Yahweh do that? Now, for a little child to be inquisitive and know that this was important, but how was it done? That right there proves that she wanted to know more. The answer to that, because there was a teacher, and Yahweh worked through the teacher. So why is it that these parents, you know, they have children that are zealous and always wanting to learn and always showing it through their actions and the words? It's because the parents themselves are zealous. The parents themselves are overshadowed like Miriam in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, overshadowed with Yahweh's laws. Because the parents opens the door to expose this way of Yahweh's way of life to them and give them the opportunity. And you may be thinking, oh, well, I don't have children. You know, I'm not really around them. Look in the mirror. You, your chi- you yourself, you're a child to Yahweh. And you should see yourself as zealous. See yourself as wanting to take hold of Yahweh's laws. Because I can say one thing about children. You can tell them anything, and they will believe it. But once they know the truth, you can lie to them, and they will never believe you. Right? They will never believe you. Because when they grasp onto the truth, they hold onto it. Stronger than a bulldog. So don't take this opportunity of learning and teaching and being able to partake of this way of life and not be held as a criminal. Don't take it lightly. You should take it and see it as the greatest blessing that Yahweh is now in full control and he is not going to allow this work to stop anymore. So if you all please stand, I'd like to introduce a great teacher in the house of Yahweh. Shalom, everyone. Now you may be seated. Okay. Um, Today I wanted to expound upon this prophecy that we are uh, living in right now. And this is a prophecy of the the last seven weeks that Daniel spoke about in um, chapter 9, verse 27. And I want you to write these numbers down. Um, Daniel lived about 538 B.Y., now add to 538, 1934. That's the year that the overseer was born. The total should come to 2,472. That's how many years this prophecy had to wait before it started to be fulfilled according to Yahweh's promise. Now. Add to 2,472, the number 83, which brings us to 2017. Now, that number is 2,555. That's how long ago this prophecy was spoken of before it actually 
came to pass. We are living in a prophecy that is over 2,000 years old. And we all know that the only person who can actually foretell the future is Yahweh. And we know that he uses his servants, his called out ones, in, in the time, er, times that the errors of his work to bring forth these visions so that his people can know that, yes, Yahweh is in control. Now, one of the, there's two tools that the overseer has given us in order to help us in our studies. The first one is the Yisrael Says program. And if any of you have gotten the recommended reading for the seven-year peace treaty, which was a, an extensive um, Yisrael Says research, as well as the AskYisrael.com, which is the other tool that the overseer has given us, you know that that is an extensive study guide. It allows you to actually briefly look over the different times and the different, different incidences where the overseer has actually brought forth and given us information on this peace treaty that was actually started and signed in 1993. It was stopped three and a half years later. It was started again, but because it was not in Yahweh's plan to be signed, it has not been actually put into action. And that's what we have to remember, that this is a, this is a plan that is counted when it is in action. And that is what the Overseer brought out just recently, where once this peace treaty is signed, then the last three and a half years will, will go into action, which will actually lead to the darkening of the sun, the nuclear bombs being exploded, and one-third of the people being destroyed because of war, famine, and pestilences. And if you, if you really want to study this out, um, I, I suggest the, the one that I did was I did Daniel 9. That's all I did. I put Daniel 9 in the Yisrael Says program, and it brought up all these different books of Yisrael and the Mark of the Beast and the uh, Book of Yahweh. There's 15 books of Yisrael Hawkins that it that references, the Mark of the Beast one as well as the Book of Yahweh. It's mentioned 110 times. So there's 110 times that you can actually really get into the meat of this prophecy and you can actually read the words that the overseer is bringing out. And one of the ones that he has brought, up, brought out is that he actually explains in the um, book of Yahweh, the seventh book of Yahweh, part two, where he explains that the Daniel 9, 27, is linked to Zechariah 4 and 5, where Zechariah is speaking about the two witnesses. Zechariah lived in between um, in 519, okay, and Daniel lived in 538. So even though they were close together, they, they, they may have known each other, but again, Yahweh worked with both of those. And the other thing uh, that we can remember is that they say that, Zechariah says that the two witnesses would establish the house of Yahweh. And we know that the house of Yahweh was established in 1983. It was recognized by the IRS. So right there is one more point that's showing you that this plan is in action. Again, um, please study these, the, use these sources. If you, have a, if you have a question, if you have, you're not sure of what the overseer said, if you're not sure of what was being brought out, if you're not sure of what's going on in this world at this time, whether it is this, this plan has been put into action or not, if what's being said is along the lines of what Yahweh has brought out, use the Yisrael Says program. Um, use it. Put in the Oslo Accords. Put in the Peace Treaty. Put in Daniel 9. Put in any of these prophets that the, the overseer has been bringing out to help us understand what's taking place. And then take the, the, the results and go to the books. Go to the books of Israel. If you need some uh, information of the books that are not available, then again, use the askisrael.com to be able to access the blogs that are on and the prophetic words and newsletters. And again, remember, you are living in a prophecy that was told of 2,555 years ago.
and it is in action right now. And with that, I'll turn it over to the next speaker. Shalom, please be seated. Praise Yahweh, may the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. I want to start off, if you'll all please turn in your book of Yahweh to Hebrews 6.10. Hebrews 6.10. Now this is one of those scriptures that, you know when you have a bad day or something's bothering you or you feel discouraged, there are certain scriptures you read to lift your heart. And, and this is a major one for me. And the other night when I was reading it, it, so many other things were coming in my brain. And, you know, I remembered that our overseer told us he believed Yeshua wrote Hebrews and that it was written for our time. So when you look at it with that, it gives you a whole different perspective. So in Hebrews 6.10, it says, For Yahweh is not unrighteous. He will not forget your work and labor of love. And I stopped right there because notice it's two different things. You know, in English, work, labor, we kind of think of that as the same thing, but notice it's different. Yahweh will not forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Those are three different things, work, labor of love, and minister to the saints. So I I look these words up, and for time's sake, I'm just going to give you the meanings so you will go home and look them up yourselves. <laughs> so the word work, Yahweh will not forget your work. It means task, deed, inner desire, intention, purpose. That gives a whole different perspective. Yahweh will not forget your inner desire, your purpose, and labor of love. And the word labor means toil as reducing the strength of pain, trouble, weariness. Yahweh will not forget your inner desire, your intention, or your weariness, your trouble, your pain of love for his work. And the word ministered means to be a servant, to serve, to wait upon. So we have to remember these things because Yeshua was telling us, look, neon light, hello, hello, hello. This is what you're going to go through. But don't worry because Yahweh's not going to forget it. Yahweh sees it. And in verse 11, he said, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the full insurance of hope until the end. In verse 12, in order that you do not become slothful, lazy, disinterested, but followers, imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So Yeshua was telling us that we've we've got to remember this. We've got to put our hand to this plow, to this work, and realize that, yes, there's going to be pain. Yes, there's going to be trouble. But Yahweh sees it. Yahweh knows it. Don't forget it. Put your hand there through faith and patience and hope. Have hope. And You know, one thing we have to remember is that we are a team. And for time's sake, I'm just going to quote 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. You can read that at home. But that talks about how we're one body, many members all working together. And I just want to give you a quick example of one simple thing, the 2017 calendar. You know, that's something our overseer has been talking about a lot lately. And I just want to mention to you everyone who was involved in this, okay? So, of course, we had our overseer and the typesetters. We had the Kohan who did the moons. We had books and booklets. We had, even had a Kohan sermon notes that was put in there. We had the proofers, the printers, the collators, the cutters, the checkers, those who put it in the envelope, the mailroom who did the labels and paperwork, the man who drove them to the post office, the cafeteria who provided the food, the mechanics who worked on the car, the teachers who watched the children, the ones who worked in the fields and with the animals to provide the food, and the ones who labor in the world working to pay tithes and offerings. This all goes together to do every single piece of work that Yahweh's house puts out. Praise Yahweh. And anyone who I didn't mention, you had a part in it too. But we have to remember that because the thing is, sisters, when we look at this work as our work, We don't criticize it. Think about it. If you put your blood, your sweat, your tears into making a sweater, and you cried, and you put so much effort and energy into that sweater, that sweater has great value to you. And you're not going to criticize it and be like, 
well, that stitch just isn't quite right. You're not going to do it because it means something. So I want to encourage all of us to, to look at the work as our work because we do have a part in it. Even those of us who don't physically do it through tithe and offerings and prayer. Do you think our, this work could do nothing without the prayers of the righteous saints? So we have to remember that we do have a part in it. And in closing, uh, if we can flip over to Exodus 2530. Exodus 2530. And this is something a long time ago. Someone made us a sign, and it's just stuck in my mind all this time. In verse 30, but I'm going to put the the real words in. Then Yisrael said to the children of, put your work area right there. I'll put mine. Then Yisrael said to the typesetters, Behold, Yahweh has called by name, put your name there, and he has filled her with spirit holy in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. And reading on, there's different examples. But that's what I want all of us to do. Put your name in here. Put your name in the work and know that we are a team and a team works together. Our, our great Yahweh is our leader. We've got our lead horses up front, overseer and Yeshua, and we're in that line as that team and we are working together. And I do pray Yahweh will bless you all and I'll turn it over to the next speaker. <laughs> Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. Okay. May Yahweh truly bless your understanding this afternoon. Um, I'd like to begin by saying, being someone who deals with children and interact with them on a daily basis, you constantly have to remind the children you are loved, you are blessed. You are welcomed. You are appreciated. You all have been there, right? We have to constantly reassure them of these things. Recently, I came to understand and I came to realize that not only children need these words, even adults. They need to be reassured time and time again that they are blessed, they are loved, they are needed, they are welcomed and appreciated. While going through our days, we tend to forget these things. But I would like you all to remind each other of this, that we are blessed every single day. Right? So, that is what I would like to speak about today, being blessed. I would like to show you this number, this really huge number. Can anyone guess what that number is? 7.5 billion. What does this number represent? 7.5 billion. The population of the earth today. That is the population of the earth today. It's a very huge number. And just imagine out of 7.5 billion, Yahweh chose you to come out of deception, right? To be taught, to be trained. He chose you. Every single one of you here, he chose. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or in TV land, you are chosen. You are blessed. I would like you all to remember that every day. So turn with me to 1 Kepha, chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Kepha, Chapter 2, verse 9. And it says, found on page 958, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a particular people, that you would show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we have been taught that according to Psalms 119, the light is the laws. And to be taught the laws, you need a teacher. Right? You all agree? Because without a teacher, we will not know the laws. There's always one sent, as Yeshua said in Revelation chapter 22. I, Yeshua, have sent my Malak. So sisters... I would like you to think about also the plan of Yahweh. 
the first beings on earth, Adam and Eve, right? And what did Adam and Eve do? They sinned, and because of this sin, salvation was cut off. It was no longer offered until us, until this generation, the seventh generation, this work, this last light on the Western light, this generation, sisters. So do you see how blessed we are to be born now in this generation and chosen out of 7.5 billion people? Turn with me to um, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. And it reads, Because he chose us with him before the foundation of the world, that we were to be, own, to be holy and without blame before him in love, preordained us to be his, cho- his children by adoption through Yeshua Messiah according to the righteous pleasure of his plan. Because of this plan, right? And also, I don't have much time, but I'd like you to um, read some these following scriptures for your notes when you go home. Metitia chapter 20, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 39 to 40. Romans chapter 8, verses 19. Please, I urge you all to read these scriptures. It will help you to understand how blessed you are in these last days to be called in this time. Every single day when we get up of our bed, we should say, praise be to Yahweh. I am blessed. I am in his house. I am called right? No longer deceived, no longer confused. And actually to sit, at the, to sit at the feet of the priest and learn on a daily basis, that is a blessing, sisters. So no longer do I want to hear, I am tired, I am weary. Always remember this number, 7.5 billion. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the next speaker. You may be seated. Okay, so right now we have a really special treat because we're going to turn the services over to the great men in the house of Yahweh, and they're going to conclude our program. So at this time, without further delay, I'd like to turn it over to the great men in the house of Yahweh. And at this time, it's my great honor and privilege to be able to introduce to you the great deacon, Yeshurun. Flash shalom, everyone. May the peace of God be with you tonight. You may be seated. My title today is The Prophecies That the Book of Yahweh Will Be Restored Has Come to Pass. I am using it. The book, of Yah- or the book of Yahweh is never going to go away. The book of life is going to stay here forever. Here are guys some history facts. Yahweh prophesied that the Pharisees, Ph- Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians, and Titus will use the temple and take all the artifacts to Rome in Daniel 11 verse 31. On page 683, they polluted the sanctuary of strength, which was the temple, and took the daily sacrifice, which was the reading of the laws daily. This means the book of Yahweh was taken away. The book burning in the year 1521, that was 496 years ago. 
John Wycliffe changed the Latin version of the Bible to English so, uh, so everyone could read it. Uh, so everyone can read the Bible. Because of this, he was hated extremely. From wikipedia.com. As you can see, there's a picture there. It says, the Council of Constance declared Wycliffe a heretic on 4 May 1415 and bans his writings, effectively both excriminating him retroactively and making him an early forerunner of Protestant. The council decreed that Wycliffe's work should be burned and his remains moved from concentrated ground. This, uh, this order, confirmed by Pope Martin V, was carried out in 1428. Wycliffe's corpse was exhumed, uh, exhumed and, and burned, and the ashes cast into the river Swift which flows through Lutterworth. Burning the Book of Yahweh was another way the Vatican was another way the Vatican, who are the children of the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians, who destroyed the temple, made everyone forget Yahweh's name to where they couldn't correctly spell and pronounce it in this time period. Please turn over to Eremia 23, verse 27, on page 592. And it says, Who devise plan and scheme to cause my people to forget my name through their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, just as their fathers have forgotten my name for their Lord. These are prophecies that the book of Yahweh would be taken away from the people have come to pass, which we believe just as Yeshua warns us in Luke 24, verse 25 on page 813. Please turn over to Luke 25, Luke 24, verse 25. On page 813. And it says... Then he said to them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. The Book of Yahweh was restored in 1987 by Israel Hopkins and the House of Yahweh. Please turn over to Isaiah 59, verse 21 on page 567. And it says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, says Yahweh, my spirit which is upon you, namely my laws which I have put in your mouth. They will not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your seed, nor from the mouth of your seed, seed, says Yahweh, from this time and forevermore. Please turn up to Hebrews 10, verse 15 through 16, on page 949. And it says, And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after he had said, had first said, This is the covenant that I will renew with them after those days, says Yahweh, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. John Wycliffe's bones may have been uh, may have been burnt, but one thing the Vatican and her daughters cannot burn is justice, truth, and wisdom, which are only found in the book of Yahweh. What is it like to be without the sun? It is just like when we don't have the book of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh is back in here to stay. The book of Yahweh is never going to go out of the house of Yahweh. Anyway, house, so search, search out the book of Yahweh. Read it. Study it. 
please turn over to Isaiah 34, verse 16 on page 551. And it says, Search out the book of Yahweh and read, Not one of these will be neglected, for it is written, Yahweh is the shepherd. They shall not want, for his mouth has commanded it, and his spirit has gathered them. <laughs> and if you all please stand. I'll turn it over to the next speaker, Deacon Yadidia Hawkins. All right, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. There's some great knowledge that Yahweh is bringing out, and we really need to take notes of these things so we'll be able to rehearse them in our minds later on. What I'm going to be speaking about is the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians, and then the Gematria. It's Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians. You can look this up. It comes out to word number... 2274, and it also comes out to number 1402. Now, 2274, 2274, it means, and it's from 2264, association, uh, and it says company. Now, uh, it also has iniquity at the bottom here okay and it's from word number 2267 and it says a society it also says a charmer a company and enchantment now that word enchantment I want you to keep that word enchantment in your mind but it also means association, uh, company, band, shared association, society. It says uh, a magic. It says magic charm. It says spell. Now, magic is a form of witchcraft. Uh, spells. They all are a form of witchcraft. And witchcraft is God worship. Now, if you can turn over to Isaiah 47, verse 9. Isaiah 47, verse 9. It's on page 560. And it says, but these two things, remember, keep the word uh, enchantment in your mind. It says, but these two things will come upon you in a moment, and one day, it says, the loss of children and widowhood, they will come upon you in their perfection, full measure, because of the multitudes of sorceries and because of the great abundance of your enchantment. And let's go over to site note C there. It says enchantment, society, company, being compact to join, have fellowship with. And those are all the words that we just went over in the gematria. Uh, society, company, uh, compact, join, fellowship. We're going to get more into that word fellowship here. Now, this number, 22... Uh, 66, it means, it means have fellowship with, to unite, to join, be a couple, to tie magic charms, charm, to unite, join, a lie. Now, this fellowship, this fellowship Unite. Who's coming into unity? This gathering, Yahweh still has his gathering today uh, taking place, and Satan also has her gathering. Now, it says unite. It says the Ten Kings, it says the Ten Kings, Pan Orthodox Council, in Greek, or in uh, Crete, declares Orthodox Church unity. Now, this unity, let's turn over to Psalm 64. Psalm 64. Psalm 64, and it's on page 457, 
and it says, remember, it says the Pan-Orthodox Council. Okay, Pan-Orthodox Council. Now it says here, hear our voice in our and in our complaints, O Yahweh. Protect our lives from fear of the enemy. It says, hide us from the secret council. And what is the secret council? It says here, the Orthodox Church has declared his unity or its unity during June 20th, 2026, Pan Orthodox Council. It says they keep their key, the key priority of the council was to proclaim the unity of the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church uh, do not constitute the federation of churches, but the one holy Catholic and apostolic church or apostolic church. And it says the message is uh, message read. Now you can find this in the PW magazine. It's plenty of these magazines that Pastor in the House of Yahweh has been putting out on these things and we need to get them so we can read up on them. Also, in the study guide, you can find these things. These things are also on the Mark of the Beast. Going on here. It's a couple more articles. Uh, Pope offers prayers and Pan-Orthodox Council opens on creed. Uh, it says, Ten Kings unity because, because of uh, iniquity will grow cold and they will hate the, uh, they will hate the whore. But... Going over to the word or number 44 or 1407, 1407, it means fourteen oh seven means uh, to pluck, to gather, uh, it says a gathering hook, sickle, a sickle, a pruning hook, and let's turn over to Mark 4. Yakin on Mark 429, and it's on page 764. Yakin on Mark 429. Okay, and it says. But when the grain is ripe, immediately he puts the sickle, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, Revelations 14, 17, if you can all turn over to there, it's on page 980. Revelations 14, 17. Okay, going up a couple of verses here to verse 15, it says, Another Malik came out of the house crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, uh, Thrust in your sickle and reap for the time is come for you to reap for for you to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Going down here, treading the grapes of wrath. Verse 17, and another Malik came out of the house, which is the heaven. He also having a, sh a sharp sickle and another Malik came out from the altar and had power over fire and carried and cried with a loud voice with a loud voice hold on where am I at and another Malik came out from the altar who had power over fire and cried with a loud voice with, and cried loud a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle saying thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for uh, her grapes are fully ripe. And then it says, And the Malik thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast them into the great uh, winepress of the wrath of Yahweh. Now, this word is also from 1413. And it means, actually, going back, I skipped something here. 1413, 
it means gad. We're gonna find out what that gad mean what gad means here soon. Pastor gave uh, plenty of sermons explaining what it means, but it says here. It says, cut, attack, invade, to gather in troops or crowd. Let's turn over to Isaiah 65, 11. Isaiah 65, 11. It's on page 570. And it says, and it says, but you are those who forsake Yahweh, who forget my holy mountain, who prepare a table for that troop. Now, let's go over to side note 1A, down at the bottom. It says, troop, Gad, God, the gods, Elohim, luck, and fortune. Now, Continuing on here, it says, therefore, it says, and who furnish a drink of, who furnish a drink offering for the number. Therefore, I will number you for the sword, and you will all, and you will all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called you, did not answer. I spoke, you did not listen. Now, Yak, going over to Yakanan Mark, it's on page 764. Yakanan Mark is on page 764. And it says, Yakanan Mark 5, uh, verse 9, it says, Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And these legions, okay, the demons and the demons that, uh, the men that the demons are controlling, they're all gathering together to come against the Lamb, come against the house of Yahweh. And one more thing, you can find this uh, passage You can find this passage, that troop, okay, and it's on page 86 in the Book of Yahweh's Study Guide. You, you might want to get this also, and you mainly need to get the Mark of the Beast, as Kanye Didia told us to get. And if you all please stand. I'd like to turn over to the next speaker, the great Khan Elia Matthews. Shabbat shalom, great saints of Yahweh, you may be seated. We're going to continue on here, getting our focus, our focus on Yahweh's last day's prophecies. Just like what's on this calendar here, the acts of Yahweh, of Yahweh's last day's work. And you know, many times we, we think of the work of Yahweh and the prophecies of Yahweh, but we focus on sometimes a long time ago. And what I want to hit at today, as we'll see, you can be turned over to page 713 with the few minutes that we have. We're going to go to Zephaniah chapter 3. I want us focusing on these prophecies that are at hand that we are fulfilling. In Zephaniah chapter 3, Look at verse 8, if you would, page 713. Just the first sentence here, Yahweh says to us, Therefore, wait for me, says Yahweh. Wait for me. Continue doing the work. Continue pushing the work. Continue believing in the teachings and the prophecies. Continue, isn't it exciting to be able to watch the news and know what's taking place? That prophecies are about to be fulfilled. We're just waiting on them to complete this peace plan. This is an awesome time to be alive. So wait for me, Yahweh says. Okay, until that day that I rise up to judge. Well, he's preparing his judges and his teachers right now. Down to verse 9, if you would. Yes, at that time I will return to the peoples the pure word, the law and the prophets, so that all of them 
may call on the name of Yahweh and serve him with one accord. So if this isn't done, then these people cannot call upon Yahweh. They won't be able to serve Yahweh. And of course, it's been brought already. The, the, the uh, daughters of, of Israel Abel were, were speaking on some of the ways in which this pure word has been restored to the people. And you're doing it is my whole point here. You're doing it. The pastor isn't the only one. Yes, he may be writing. He's doing a great work, but he can't do it without you. The Prophetic Word magazine, the newsletter, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and all these other things. Facebook. All of that is part of restoring this pure word so that the world, the people in the world, that Yahweh is calling, this, uh, as Pastor mentioned it today, this sealing. You know, he's giving the people like a, a seed to understand a part of Yahweh's way of, of Yahweh's work. In Isaiah 34, 16, let's read that as well. Maybe I can make it clear there. I know you know the scripture. It's on page 551. Search out the book of Yahweh and read, and none of these will be neglected. Brother, in this book of Yahweh is going out to the world. The book of Yahweh, there's people in the world that could not have the book of Yahweh even shipped to them. They now have access to it. There's people in the world that couldn't afford the book of Yahweh, but now can still read it. You understand what you are doing? You are fulfilling this prophecy so that the people can search it out in reading it. And there's another aspect. I want to uh, turn over to Psalms 19 for a moment. This is page 441. Verse 7. I know we know the scripture as well. The law of Yahweh is perfect. It's perfect. Converting the whole person. The testimony, the prophecy of Yahweh is sure, making the simple ones wise. And that's what I was going to title this, the prophecy of Yahweh is sure. So this law of Yahweh, it converts. It converts a person's heart and mind, like on the cover of the Peaceful Solution Character Education program books. And I wanted to give you all a snapshot of that. I was very blessed, and I hope I can do this in a few minutes. I was very blessed about a year or so ago to be able to meet with Pastor and to, uh, to share with him you know, all these comments that uh, some of us that are doing the, the, the preaching of the, the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, we hear great comments. And these, these people love to give us compliments. And I try to remind them all the time, no, it's not me. It's not us. It's this beautiful program. And I wanted him to hear what some of these people have to say. But I want you to see it as well, because this is part of prophecy being fulfilled. Because Yahweh is a person who doesn't have to be in this sanctuary to have their heart and mind start to change. This is a person, I'm not giving their names, Okay. But this is a person who's never getting out of prison, by the way. He says here, if you can read that, uh, as a lifer in SCDC, that's South Carolina Department of Corrections. I am going to read it just as he said, wrote it. I take in peaceful solution for about 11 months. And this program has made me a better man. As for solving problems that has baffled me for a long time. Now I know I can solve any problem without violence. Okay, very sorry. This is another gentleman. He says, I do enjoy the class. And you see the, let me explain something. These uh, notes are all on the same sheets of paper. And one of the reasons is we're not allowed to give anything to the inmates. And we're not allowed to take anything from them. So the great deacon, uh, Deacon Shea, was with me when we collected these comments. I asked the men to just write what they think about the program, whether you think it's terrible, whether you like it or whatever. 
And one day, we might get the opportunity to present it. So anyway, back to these men. Here's what this one said. I do enjoy the class very much. And I now know how to better control my anger and self-control. And to me, that's a blessing to my life. The Peaceful Solution Program showed me that the only person I can control is myself. And I, this is his writing, I wish I would have known that years ago. I would have been a better person. It's amazing. I hear these comments, but reading them, man, it's, it's something. I would, I, I would have been a better person on all levels of life. To me, this is a jewel. See us? Thank you, Peaceful Solution. I don't know if you can see that. It, it's, it's, it's awesome. I, I better pick with just one more. Uh, let's try this one. I have plenty of them, but nevertheless. This man says, I believe that the Peaceful Solution class is very beneficial to my character. Again, I remind you that all these men, this is a long-term facility. Most of them don't even have an opportunity for parole. So they have no need to come back and take the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. But they sign up for it. They have to sign up for it every 12 weeks. And they keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back for years, many years now. You would think, why? And you know they don't even get credit from the prison for taking this class. All the rest of their classes, they do. I believe that the Peaceful Solution class is very beneficial to my character. It is a healing for my, it is healing for my spirit and it is victory for my soul. I express what was taught to me to my family as well as those who are not assigned to the class. Peaceful Solution has opened doors to a new way of thinking when it comes to reacting uh, to various circumstances and situations. I am very pleased with the information uh, that it has obtained from the, from the facilitators. My only regret is that, that, that I was uh, not introduced to the peaceful solution before this storm came. And I've heard that comment from many men. I've watched them cry in front of me, now I'm crying in front of them. <laughs> if they're watching this. But it's just, and it wasn't, it wasn't, the goal was not, again, to, to hear the, the comment about the instructor or something is that I wanted Pastor to hear what the people are saying about what he is doing, what Yahweh's inspired him to do. And he let me speak to him about that some time ago. Turn over to Emotia, chapter 3. Page 696. And I know you know this scripture very well. I want to point out one thing if I can about it. Verse 2. You, brethren, you, you only have I known. And I just want to bring to your mind some of the definitions the pastor has shown us before about this word known. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. And this word uh, known is word 3045. And it's the word yada. And it's beautiful. So what I want you to do along with me is as we... Replace this word known with some of these definitions. It's word 3045. It's yada. Again, and it does mean to know. So it is only us that Yahweh knows. It's only us that he ascertains by seeing, as Pastor even brought today, right? The, 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 the heavens, brother, are watching us. How see Yahweh is open to the heavens. Uh, the highlighted words, I know there's a lot of definitions in here, but observation. So it's only us that Yahweh is observing and that he cares for, that he recognizes. We're the only ones on the earth that know how to even pray to Yahweh. We're the only ones on the earth that know how to keep his law. That's because of the great work that our leader and teacher does. Also, instruction. So we're the only ones that receive his instruction. 
We're the only ones that he has designated. That he has set apart. He's, we're the only ones that he acknowledged. They can cry. They can say, oh my God. It doesn't matter. We're the only ones that Yahweh acknowledged. Because we keep his laws, statutes, judgments. We believe in his prophecies. We're the only ones that he is acquainted with. That he advises. That he answers. That he appoints. That he causes to discern, to understand. We're the only ones that he's a familiar friend with. We're the only ones that he regards and that he has respect for. This is the creator of the universe speaking to us. We're the only ones that he is sure of, of a surety, and that have understanding. So we have a lot of great reasons to continue in these prophecies, brethren, and, and believing in them and working in, working them and waiting on Yahweh as well. Turn over to page 471. Psalms 91. Look at verse 14. Yahweh says, because you have set your love upon me, I will deliver you. I will set you on high because you know my name. You will call me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life, I will satisfy you, and I will show you my salvation. You can see how important it is for us to continue forward and not get sidetracked, not allow all of the uh, distractions that we've been taught that could possibly get in our way to hinder the goal and to slow us down. And we need to do as Pastor continually says, work, hurry, work. The workload never slows down in Yahweh's great house. But verse 14, because you've set your love upon me. Don't set our love, brethren, on anything in the world. Don't, don't get fooled in this last hour. Okay? Keep our desires and our heart toward Yahweh's way. Revelation chapter 3, if you would. Page 973. In verse 8. I know your works. Okay, pastor said today we're being scrutinized. We're being watched. We're being seen down to the, the very minute details. And you think of that word scrutinized. You mentioned that during the meal today. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength and have kept my word. You haven't forgotten my prophecies. You didn't cast them off as something irrelevant. You kept working for them and striving for them. You kept making the book of Yahweh, something that now everyone in the world can read. And you hear, you hear him mention of the people that are contacted in the house of Yahweh. They're so excited to have access to this material. So you have a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Please, brother, if it's in any of us, please get away from this foolish mindset that somehow we do not have to be in unity with the priesthood of Yahweh. Behold, I give out of the assemblage of the accuser who preach themselves to be those who worship Yahweh, and they are not, but they attempt to deceive by falsehood. Behold, I will appoint them for the purpose of worshiping in the presence of your footstool, and they will understand that I love you. Verse 10, 
because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you. Remember that. Our protection. This is the era that has promised this protection. I will keep you from the hour of temptation, which will come upon all the world. Now, brethren, if you all please stand. It's been an honor. I'd like to turn it over to the great priest, uh, Kohan Michael. Okay, this time I have the great opportunity to present our blood passing over to Israel Abel Hawkins. <laughs> Since you're all standing, if you'll raise your hands in prayer. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to give thanks before we can eat now. If we're in a rush, <laughs> we're in a rush to eat. Um, as you, I hope you heard the announcement. I'm going to eat, and then we're going to get right back here in a hurry. The, the film has been put off till 6.30. Everyone needs to see this film. It'll bring you up to date on the history, see, of the House of Yahweh, what we've gone through so far. Uh, I'll go ahead and give thanks, and I'll go ahead and pray for those who have to uh, leave. And uh, so that at sunset, when you get ready to leave, you'll have Yahweh's uh, blessing on uh, uh, your prote uh, protect, you always protection on your getting back to the world. <laughs> uh, be glad when that's over. <laughs> Raise your hands. Our Father in heaven, whose name is Yahweh, this is Israel Hawkins, Father, your last day's witness, coming to you through Yahshua, our high priest and king, over the house of Yahweh, coming before you, Father, along with your house. You're called out ones, the house of Yahweh, the only house of Yahweh, uh, coming before you, Father, through Yahshua, our high priest, requesting, Father, your help and guidance for, your, for every individual in your house that you're calling, Father, and the ones you're getting the messages to, to uh, spread this and talk about it and and uh, get it from one to another throughout the war raging nations that we're seeing right now. We're, uh, Father, we're in a, a critical stage in history where the house, uh, we know your house is being trained to, to uh, deliver uh, your creation, uh, the mankind uh, from bondage and also the, the whole creation, the the microorganisms, the the uh, firmament, the 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 great planets. We see, and we thank you for showing us these things. And and uh, we know the beings in uh, in the heavenly kingdoms are watching us. We know that they're aware of us, and they're anxiously looking forward to this deliverance from the bondage of sin. Also. The corruption that has corrupted this earth. From it has corrupted this earth from day one and is still being taught, even though they can see the results of it and the confusion. The hatred and the wars that keep raging and have raged for 6,000 years and still won't repent. We know, Father, that your plan includes us. In fact, we know that your plan is built around us. Your sons and your daughters who will take over, receive authority from you. Authority, Father, to bring your peaceful kingdom, the peaceful solution, character education to the entire universe, and turn this, the whole universe around as you have turned us around and brought us out of this world of sin right now and brought us into your house, a house of peace and a house of prayer for all people. And we thank you for this, Father, dearly, and we 
look forward to this great change that is coming, a quick change, and, ho and pray that it does come quickly. We ask your guidance, Father, as we strive to do your will. We know that there's a great work ahead of us. There's overcoming yet to do. We know that, uh, that we've got to come out of this world, and we're slowly doing so. Uh, I would like it if you'd speed things up. Uh, for us and bring us out speedily, everyone in the world. We bless you and praise you, Father, for the opportunity of being a part of your kingdom forever. We ask, Father, the, that for those that are uh, that are living away from your house and having to uh, travel to your house for the feast days, we ask, Father, that you protect them, guide them back here. We have four months to the to uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, and we're asking, Father, your guidance and protection upon all of them. Uh, we know, Father, that, uh, that your house is opened uh, in heaven and is being judged, and we also know that if they're not at your house, then they've lost out. So we ask you, Father, to please help them, uh, make a way for them, uh, keep them listening to your to your sermons and your teachings and growing father in this uh, great knowledge of peace that that you have ordained from the beginning father we thank you for the food here tonight and uh, and being able to eat and dine together uh, this uh, this great feast of Pentecost uh, uh, the gathering the great gathering that is taking place at this time of the first fruits. We thank you for that and the knowledge of it and your plan, Father, and we see it all coming to pass. We see it coming to pass at uh, your prophecies and the, and the activities of the world also. We ask, Father, the, your blessings upon the food here this evening. Uh, we understand that our meals are ready and to partake of at this time. And uh, but the learning is still not over. Uh, we've got uh, uh, about another hour of this uh, to go uh, that is desperately needed for your people to take back to wherever they are, even their tents here. Uh, we thank you, Father, for the great feast that we've had so far. We still ask your presence, Father, and and maybe even uh, uh, more gifts. Uh, uh, holy, righteous gifts from you uh, as you did in the days uh, before us. We thank you and praise you for all things and ask these things in our high priest, uh, Yahshua's name, by his authority. Hallelujah, Yahweh. I love you. You ready? <laughs> Okay, well, come on, get those things up in there. Where are they? Come on, here we go. <laughs> come on now, cheer up, cheer up. Am I missing something? <laughs> I think we lost some of our uh, olive branches, but I'll throw you some twigs maybe from this one. <laughs> if, uh, your voices didn't go too, I know that. So let's get ready for and uh, try to uh, jar these beams right here on the ceiling. At the count of three, hallelujah, way. One, two, three. Hallelujah, way. Praise Yahweh.